Hi there, welcome to another Real Talk with Dr. Jim Sharps. Great to have you back with us. Uh, we, we're continuing a new series. Um, so if you're a follower of the channel, subscribe to the channel, you'll know we like connecting content together so you can have a journey to follow through as new videos are uploaded. We hope they're informative. Um, do let us know in the comments. Uh, do hit like and subscribe on the channel so you're updated whenever we post a new video. Uh, but as I said, we're continuing uh, another series um, that we're looking really at RBTI, Reams Biological Theory of Ionization. Uh, we've already done a previous video looking at the general overview of RBTI, what benefits it can have, how does the test work, why is it, why is it valuable, where does it fit in against other tests like, like blood tests. And what we're going to do now for the next few videos is really just zoom in a little bit more on, on each of the tests um, and provide some, some more, we hope, insightful information. Um, so what we'll do is there are seven tests that, that kind of uh, make up the uh, RBTI suite, uh, if I can call it that, of numbers. Um, and today we'll be talking about uh, BRICS. Um, so Dr. Jim, perhaps you could just give us a quick summary of, of what the, the BRICS element of the RBTI test is. Yes, and that's the first number uh, in the seven number series. And that one has to do with the percentage of carbohydrates, uh, percentages of sugar in the urine. Uh, so it's, it's the percentage per liter uh, or per drop, whatever measurement you want, it's, it's, the, it's that percentage uh, that's in there. And there's a range where they're, they're, that's the ideal range, and then it can be either too high or too low, having various uh, health implications. And, and what can the, the BRICS test tell us about diet and lifestyle? Ah, yes. It, well, it tells you uh, if you if you have either too much or too little carbohydrates or specifically sugar. Um, it kind of relates to, you know, um, whether you're pre-diabetic or diabetic or hypoglycemic. If, if, of course, if it's too much sugar, too high a percentage, then you get into that threshold of, uh, of uh, hyperglycemia and, or it can be too low. So, you know, the number has to be in that certain range. Uh, and, 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 and basically it. it it basically will tell you uh, from a diet standpoint if there's either too much, too little carbs, or too, too much or too little water, which is basically what manages that number the best. And in terms of that, uh, uh, Dr. Jim, can I just take a step back and say, you know, if you have too much carbs, or in this case, sugars, you, you mentioned. Um, having diabetes. Mm -hmm. in, in a diet and lifestyle perspective, what are the dangers of not having enough water or having too much sugar? Right. What, what kind of um, risk factors does that pose? Right. If you have too much carbohydrates, too much sugars, or too little water, that number will be too high. And then so that percentage of sugar will be too high in the blood. And, and the problem with that is that's the number that really um, reflects on the oxygen availability to the body because those carbohydrate uh, molecules are much heavier. And so if it's too high, then the, it impacts the, the amount or the availability of oxygen of, uh, and utilization of oxygen. So, so uh, and you know, the, the brain needs 20% more oxygen than the, um, uh, than, than the, uh, you know, the other parts of the body. But all the part of, parts of the body need oxygen. So if it's, if it's too thick, the blood is too thick, the oxygen, uh, you'll have those oxygen availability and utilization issues. If it's too low, then you don't have enough oxygen. And so there's other health issues involved. And so as we talked about in previous sessions, you know, there's some 800, maybe even 8,000 named diseases. But, you know, if the, the, it's basically getting to this one issue. And there's a whole host of, of named um health issues that occur if, if that number is too high or too low. That's very clear. And in terms of the numbers themselves, what do good numbers signify? Yes, good numbers signify the optimum oxygen availability and utilization in the body. So in that threshold, you have the best um, availability of oxygen. And, and of course, uh, that also um, relates to how it relates to the other number. So any, the bottom line is anything that you do to help one number helps them all. On the other hand, anything that uh, impacts one number 
impacts the entire equation or the entire formula. So even if you're, what I like about your question, even if you're in that perfect range, no number is perfect unless all numbers are perfect. Now you want to be there as opposed to too high or too low, uh, but, um, but you can't just say, oh, uh, I, oh, I'm perfect over here if all the other numbers are, are, are out. So, so hope that, hopefully that kind of uh, clarifies that because some people, they see one number out of context and it looks like it's good, but you have to look at it in the context of all the other numbers. So even though it's in that perfect range, if, if based on how it relates to some of the other numbers, that could be a real problem. And, and as we go through this, I think it'll make more sense. But just as you asked, asked specifically about that one number, there is a, a perfect range that you want to be in, or what we call the healing range. And then, uh, then the other implications, um, you don't want to be there. You want to be there as opposed to being too high or too low because of what I said earlier about the oxygen availability. Yeah, that's uh, that's clear, uh, Dr. Jim. Thank you. And you you just mentioned um, uh, just a few moments ago the the interrelation between the tests. Could you give us um, maybe just a kind of a teaser of the other uh, videos and, and focuses we'll go through in the other tests? What yes. are the sub? What are some of the common interrelations between the BRICS tests and some of the other tests that we'll go into detail in in later videos? Yes, and that's a that's a powerful question. Because as I said, you know, we talked about whether there's too much water, too little water. Now you also need a sufficient amount of water for the digestive system to work. So when we look at, for example, the pHs, you're going to see that that talks about digestive uh, um, uh, efficiency, effectiveness. So yeah, you can see how it relates to, to, um, to digestion uh, or the pHs. It also relates, it relates most, um, most importantly to the... Um, uh, salt. So, so, and, and, and if you have too much salt in the system, the water will help that as well. So you need to see what that salt number is. And, you, and, and, and when we get to that, you'll see how that has a, that has the, 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 the most closely, uh, most, the, the closest relationship to the BRICS number because, because to, to fix the salt number, it's also a water issue. So you need to look at what that balance is because if, if, they, if they're way out of balance and you're fixing one, you can actually worsen another. So if you need more water over here and you're already low here, that water make you even lower or vice versa. You need water over here, uh, but, but you don't need, uh, you know, there's too much water. And then, so you, there's always looking at that whole relationship of numbers uh, in, in order to get everything right. But that's a very powerful question you ask. So, so, so yes, you want to look at them individually, but you need to look at it all the, all the numbers in terms of their relationships. Since that's why I said it's a mathematical formula, and anything that you do to change one number changes the result of that formula. So none of the numbers stay stand alone, but they they all have uh, very important implications. Does that help? Uh, that's super, clear, in, 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 that's super clear, Doctor. That's super clear, Doctor Jim. What potential relationships are. That's super clear, Doctor Jim. I, I thank you for kind of just taking us through the BRICS test. Um, please, if you're following this kind of series of videos, leave comments if you have questions. We know that RBTI is something that we know in our in our kind of conversations that there is a lot of interest in how it works. If we look more generally at how the health space is moving, having kind of an objective, how am I doing? Uh, what do I need to focus on approach to, to personal health is extremely powerful and RBTI is is a really great um, analytical tool to like explore and investigate how the body is doing. So Dr. Jim, thank you for sharing that with us. Please leave us a comment in the comment section if you kind of have any questions on what we've covered today. This isn't this isn't intended to be an exhaustive um, look at, at the different tests. It's just to give a flavor. So I uh, hope you kind of will journey along with us as we go through the other tests. Um, if our BTI is of interest to you, we do have a number of uh, different classes and courses available at IUM. You can visit our website, iumonline.org, to find out more about our curriculum. But thanks for joining us, and we'll see you again next time.
Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe, clicking the bell icon so you're notified whenever we upload.